Turn your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 4. Book of Revelation, chapter 4. And as you're turning there, I just have a thought for the day. Parents. How many parents do we have? Just about everyone here is a parent. We spend the first two years of our children's life teaching them to walk and to talk. Then we spend the next 16 years telling them to sit down and shut up. Amen. There's your thought for the day. This morning I want to talk about, um, I don't know, a near and dear subject to, I hope, all of our hearts. And that's heaven. Amen? Heaven. Book of Revelation, chapter 4, starting at verse 1. This is John when he received the revelation of Jesus Christ. He said, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Now when we talk about heaven, we're actually very limited to what we know about it. The Bible itself, it mentions heaven quite often, but when it does, it just gives us small glimpses of what heaven is like, the things that are in heaven, the things that we'll see. But we, ne- we need to understand, we need to know this, the Bible gives us all that we need to know about heaven. Amen? All that we need to know, well, what we do know, certainly leaves us in complete awe. The little bit that God gives us, those little glimpses, just leave us in complete awe. Now, we need to understand that God purposely keeps many things about the Bible concealed to us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the Apostle Paul, he shares and he describes his trip to heaven. He states that he was called up to heaven and he heard inexpressible words which are not lawful for a man to utter. What is Paul saying there? What we can glean from that is that God is telling us that some things in heaven are a sacred secret. Some things in heaven are a divine mystery. And are not to be told on this side of eternity. Amen? Heaven. A poll was conducted a few years back. It said 72% of Americans believe in heaven. 60% believe in hell. But only 4% believe that they are going to hell. Think about that. And then we contrast this to what Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Jesus said, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by that gate, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Jesus is talking about the only two paths that we have to eternity. One, he said, leads to destruction. That's the broad gate, the wide gate, the broad way. And that destruction he's talking about is hell. But then he said there's a narrow gate. And that leads to life. He's talking about heaven. Amen? So eternity, we only have two choices. It's either heaven or hell. Regardless of what this world will tell you that, you know, everyone ends up going to heaven, it's just not true. It's contrary to what Jesus tells us here. This tells us that the majority of people are deceived about the truth when we think of heaven and hell. 
If the majority believe that they're going to heaven, that's contrary to what Jesus says. So we need to look and search into God's word to find out what it tells us about heaven. First thing I want us to see, want us to understand, is that heaven is a real place. Amen? Heaven is a real place. It's not a state of mind. It's not a a science fiction fantasy. Heaven is a real place, just as real as this church house that we came to that we're in this morning. Amen? Just as real as this church. And as I mentioned earlier, the, the Apostle Paul, he talks about, he described his trip that he had to heaven. The privilege when he was caught up to heaven. Listen to what he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, skipping down to verse 2. Now again, this is the Apostle Paul. He's talking in the third person, so you have to understand that. He said, I know a man, but he's talking about himself. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, how he was caught up into paradise, into heaven, and heard inexpressible words which is not lawful for a man to utter. The Apostle Paul is telling us that his experience was so incredible, so indescribable, so inexpressible, that he doesn't even know if he was in his physical body or if he was in his spirit. Amen? Doesn't know if he was in his physical body or in the spirit. Now, I want you to notice something here. In verses 2 and 4, he uses the term caught up twice. He said he was caught up to heaven. He was caught up to paradise. Heaven is a real place. Which direction was he caught Amen. Heaven is a real place, and it's up from the earth. It's up from us. Now, some critics, they've tried to, you know, argue that this is a ridiculous statement. Since the earth is round. And if the earth is round, then any direction can be up from the earth. Well... I say their argument is ridiculous. Why? Because everyone on earth knows that we have a central up, and it's called what? North. Amen? We say up north and down south. We have a north pole, and we have a what? A south pole. And all of that is is set into place because of the north star. It has a fixed position. The North Star doesn't move. It's fixed. And we know that. Scientists know that. They've they've studied that. They've looked at that. And that North Star is a fixed position. It does not move. Isaiah chapter 14. This is the account of Satan's fall. Verse 13 says, For you have said in your heart, Satan had said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. Leviticus chapter 1, verse 11. He shall kill it on the north side of the altar before the Lord. Where's the Lord? Up in the north. Heaven is up. Amen? Apostle Paul said he was caught up. Now another note in verse 2. He said he was caught up to the third heaven. So what does that mean? What is the third heaven? What are the other heavens? Well, making it simple. The first heaven is what we see when we look up into the sky in the daytime. Amen? That's our atmosphere. The second heaven is what we see when we look up into the sky at nighttime. Amen? That's the stars, the planet, the moon, 
Those things, that's our, you know, the atmosphere, the, the stars and the planets. Now, the third heaven, simply put, this is God's dwelling place. The very heaven that we're talking about today. The heaven that most of us talk about when we die If we're saved, if we're born again, if we know Jesus Christ, then we will go to heaven. That's the third heaven. That is God's dwelling place. Someone once said, the first heaven we can see by day. The second heaven we can see by night. The third heaven we can see by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful saying. So heaven is a real place. When the saved leave this old ball of dirt, they need something. They need a place to put their feet upon. Amen? The Bible tells us that place is heaven. Second thing I want us to see, heaven is not only a real place, but heaven is also a homecoming place. Amen? A homecoming place. The most asked question I think of all the ages about heaven. Will we know our loved ones when we get to heaven? Will we know our loved ones when we get to heaven? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. says, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part... But then I shall know just as I also am known. The Apostle Paul here, when he's talking about then, he says now and then. Now is today in the present. Then he's talking about in eternity. He's talking about in heaven. Amen? In heaven. Now we know in part, but in heaven we will see the whole picture. Amen? We'll see it exactly as God sees it. He's referring to when we are in heaven. The real question is not, will we know our loved ones in heaven? The real question is, do we really know them now? Amen? How well do we really know them? How well do we know our loved ones? Do we know them now? The real answer is, no, not really. Amen? We see each other on the outside. We communicate with each other. We know what the other person shares. But we really don't know what's in each other's hearts deep down inside. In the Old Testament, God sent the prophet Samuel to the house of Jesse to anoint the next king over Israel. When Samuel looked upon Eliab, who was Jesse's oldest son, Samuel thought, here's the next king. Eliab was very stately, tall, held himself right, very noble. And Samuel thought, this is the guy. But God told Samuel, he said, Samuel, don't look upon the countenance. Don't look upon a person's outward appearance, nor on the height of his stature. God declared that mankind looks on the outward appearance, but God, God looks on the inside. God looks upon the heart. Amen? When King David, he had a child with Bathsheba, When that child became very, very sick and was almost dying, David mourned, and he wept, and he prayed, and he fasted. But eventually the baby passed away. David then declared, he said, listen, he said, I cannot bring him back. I cannot bring my child back. He said, but I can go to him. Where was he talking? Talking about in heaven. Amen. He knew he couldn't bring his child back, but he also knew if he was a child of God, if he trusted in Jesus Christ, then he could also go and see his child in heaven. In Genesis chapter 
35, verse 8. It's talking about the death of Abraham. Then Abraham breathed his last, and he died in a good old age, and an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. Gathered to his people. Genesis chapter 35, talking about Isaac. So Isaac breathed his last, and he died, and he was gathered to his people. Book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 32, talking about Moses. Then the Lord spoke to Moses that very same day, saying, Go up this mountain of the Air Abarim, Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab across from Jericho. View the land of Canaan, which I give to the children of Israel as a possession, and die on the mountain which you ascend, and be gathered to your You catch that? Be gathered to your people. Those who have died before you in Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. Now listen to this. That whether we wake, whether we uh, are awake, whether we are alive or sleep or die in Christ, we shall live together with him. Key word there is together. Amen? Whether we live or die in Christ, we shall live together with him. It's talking about a homecoming. We will absolutely know our loved ones. In heaven. The Bible speaks of many family reunions. The Bible speaks of many homecomings. One specifically in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 11. Jesus said, I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, where? In the kingdom of heaven. Amen. It's talking about a family reunion. He's talking about a homecoming. We will absolutely know our loved ones in heaven. In fact, we're going to know them better than we know them today. Amen. We will know one another for who we truly are. In heaven, we're going to be able to look upon each other's heart. Just as Christ does. Amen? Same exact way that Christ does. Third thing I want us to see. Heaven is a real place. Heaven is a homecoming place. But heaven is also a joyous place. Amen? Heaven will not be an eternity of just lounging around in our PJs and our slippers. Amen? Or the same thing we wear to Walmart. It's not a place of just laying around and a place of boredom. Yes, heaven is a place of rest. Amen? God makes it very clear that heaven is a place of rest, but it's not a place of boredom or laziness. Amen? Book of Revelation, chapter 7. Verse 15, therefore they are before the throne of God, he's talking about the saved, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. Listen, some of the greatest joys in my life were when I was serving the Lord, amen? Amen. The greatest joys in my life is when I was serving the Lord. And what is the greatest way that we serve the Lord? Serving who? Each other. Amen? You want joy in your heart? Serve one another. The greatest joys I've ever experienced was serving one another. Now 
Now, I love music. Amen? Anybody else love music? I'm just not musically inclined. The only instrument I can play is my nose. I can blow it and I can pick it. Amen? <laughs> I can carry a tune. I just can't unload it. Amen? <laughs> but listen. In heaven, guess who's going to lead the heavenly choir? This guy right here. You know why? Because the Bible says the last shall be first. And believe me, when it comes to singing, I'm in the back. Amen? But heaven is a joyous place. Revelation chapter 15. Starting in verse 2. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. And those who have the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing in that sea of glass, having harps of God. I'll learn how to play the harp, too. They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints, who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you alone are holy, for all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifested. Listen, when we're in glory, we are going to sing, we're going to rejoice, we're going to praise, we are going to serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for ever. Amen? Heaven is an absolute place of joy. Next, I want us to see that not only is heaven a joyous place, but heaven is also a perfect place. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things are passed away. Heaven will be a place of perfection. Amen? Heaven is the presence of all that is good and pure and it's the absence of all that is bad or evil this is why the the apostle paul talked about himself after his uh, after he was called up to heaven listen to what he said in the book of philippians chapter 1 he said for to me to live is christ and to die is gain what was he talking about most of us run from death. We fear death. We try to do everything we can to stay alive, don't we? But the Apostle Paul said, for me to die is what? Is gain. He said, but if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit for my labor. Yet what I, what, uh, what I shall choose, I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two. He said, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. To depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Heaven is all that the loving heart of God would desire. And we think of the love of God. It's a love that gave his only begotten son in exchange for our life. Amen? It's an unconditional love. Heaven is all that the inexhaustive mind of God could conceive. And all that the almighty hand of God could create. Heaven. 1 Corinthians 2.9 The Apostle Paul, 
He said, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've got a pretty broad imagination. Amen. God says we can't even imagine the things he has prepared for us in glory. Just consider all the beauty. I want you to think about that. Just consider all the beauty that we have in this world. The mountain ranges, the streams, the waterfalls, the sun sets, the sun rises. My wife, brownie points. Think of all the beauty that we have on this earth. And yet, this world is dying. This world is in decay. This world is marred and corrupted by sin. And yet, we still have all that beauty in it. Imagine what heaven looks like in its perfection. It's uncompromised, flawless, pure perfection. It's beauty and it's majesty. We can't even put in words. We can't even fathom in our minds. The only thing we can do is we'll just have to see it to believe it. Amen. We have to see it to believe it. Now, there's one other thing I want us to understand when we're talking about heaven. The greatest thing about heaven is not what it looks like or where it's located. Amen. The greatest thing about heaven is who's there. John 14, 2. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. For what purpose? Do you ever think about that? It's a beautiful, beautiful chapter in the Gospel of John, one of, one of my favorites. What purpose does Jesus go to prepare a place for us? For us to live? No. You have to go to verse 3. John 14, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3 says, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Here's the key. That where I am, you may be also. You catch that? That is the greatest part of heaven. That wherever Christ is, guess where we will be? Right by his precious side. Amen. That's the important part of heaven. To be with Christ is the greatest part of heaven. Now, I used to have to travel quite a bit for work. it would take me out of town for a couple nights. And, you know, when I'd come home, I'd run into the house, and the first thing I'd do is go hug my couch, right? My recliner chair. First thing I'd do, I'd go run in the kitchen and kiss my refrigerator, give it a big hug. No, it's ridiculous, right? What's the first thing you think I did? I ran and gave my wife a hug and a kiss and hugged my kids. Because they're the greatest thing about home. Home is home because of my wife and my children. Heaven is heaven because of Jesus Christ. Amen? And that is the greatest thing about heaven. That's what makes heaven, heaven. Do you know what Jesus' desire is? Just think about that for a second. Jesus' desire. John chapter 17. Listen to what Jesus prayed. He said, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. Did you ever know that? 
Jesus' heart desire is to have us with him. His desire is to be with us. He loves us. He died for us to show us just how much he loves us. And he wants to spend an eternity with us. That's why 2,000 years ago he left this earth. He ascended back into heaven and he told us why. Because he went to prepare a place for us. And if he went to prepare a place for us, he's going to come again, receive us unto himself, that where he is, we can be also. Amen. Heaven is a perfect place. And that's because of Christ. Last point I want us to see this morning The heaven is also an immediate place, an immediate place. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 5 and 6, or I'm sorry, 6, 7, and 8. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well-pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. What we need to understand here in in verse 8, that word present in the Greek literally means immediately present. The moment we are absent from the body, the Bible tells us that we are immediately present with our Lord and Savior. When a born-again believer passes away, they immediately go into the presence of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Jesus, when he hung on the cross between two thieves, the one thief mocked him, ridiculed him just like the crowd. But the other thief, recognized Jesus who he was. And he called out and he said, Lord. He said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And what did Jesus tell him? He said, today you shall be with me in paradise. He was telling that man, because you recognized me, you trusted me, you called upon my name. That the moment you take your last breath, you will come into my presence. Today you shall be with me in paradise. Acts chapter 7 verse 59. Stephen, the first martyr. Listen to what he said. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. When he was taking his last breath, he was saying, Lord Jesus Christ, receive me immediately. In the 16th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, we read about the account of the rich man and Lazarus. And the Bible tells us when Lazarus died, it says he was immediately carried by the angels, where? Into heaven. Immediately carried by the angels into heaven. When a child of God passes away, they immediately go into the presence of their Lord and Savior in heaven. Wonderful promise that we have. Amen. Now, I want us, as I bring this message to a close, I want to make a very, very important note. I want to make sure that everyone understands. As I started out in Matthew chapter 7. Jesus gave us a picture of humanity and what path we are on. He said, there's a broad gate, and there's many that are on that path. But that path leads to destruction, leads to hell. But there is a straight gate, a narrow way that leads to life. Eternal life in heaven. 
But he says there's only a few that find that one. Why is it a narrow way? It's narrow because there's only one way. And that is through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. That's what makes it a narrow way. Not that it's hard to find and it's hidden. It's wide open. But there's only one way. Jesus had a Pharisee come to him. His name was Nicodemus in the Gospel of John chapter 3. And Jesus answered Nicodemus and he said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I've heard people who don't go to church, people who are worldly, you know, they talk about Christians. Ah, oh, they talk about this born again stuff. Born again is Christ's words. Amen? That's his terminology. That's not a, that's not a, a, a Christian's terminology, a churchgoer. That's the words of Jesus Christ. He said, look, he said, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to Jesus, he says, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, he said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. We talked about this a few weeks ago. What is the water? Right here. We are washed by the water of the word. Amen? Water and the spirit. The spirit is God's Holy Spirit. God's Holy Spirit will draw draw us to Christ. We open up the word of God. Who does that draw us to? Draws us to Jesus Christ. This book, the Bible, the word of God, It's all about Jesus from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. It is all about Christ. It reveals who he is, what he's all about. And when we read it, we are drawn to him. Convicted of our sins. And drawn to the foot of his cross. Both the Word of God and the Holy Spirit leads us and draws us to Christ. And then it's up to us. By faith, we have to trust in Him. By faith, we have to receive Him. There's nothing we can do. It's not about being a good person. It's not about doing good things to earn our way into heaven. There's nothing that we can do. Christ has done it all. And God gave us the gift of salvation. But just like any gift, we have to receive it. Amen? If I give you a gift, I wrap it in a box and wrap it in paper and give it to you and you just sit it in the corner. Is it doing you any good? You haven't received it. You see, that's the key. We have to receive Christ by faith. We're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, period. Amen? Revelation chapter 21, verse 22. But I saw no temple in it, talking about heaven. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, Jesus Christ, are its temple. The city of heaven had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. And the nation of those who are saved. Those who are born again shall walk in its light and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. What honor and glory do we have? We were created in his image, amen? 
That's the honor and glory that we bring into it. The Bible says that when we go to heaven, we shall be like him, like Christ. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. That means forever because there's no night there. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. Look at the caution in verse 27. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. You see all this talk about heaven. We need to understand only those that are born again are going to be there. So what about those who are not found written in the Lamb's book of life? Those who aren't saved, those who aren't born again. Well, the next chapter in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, tells us. Or I'm sorry, the, the chapter prior, verse chapter 20, starting at verse 12. Again, John rec- uh, received this revelation. He says, and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the Lamb's book of life. And the dead were judged out of this book. Then death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That is the eternal lake of fire. That is Gehenna hell. The Bible makes it very clear. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you are not born again. If you are not saved. If your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. then you will be cast into hell for eternity. But listen, I don't want to end on a gloomy note because praise God that today is still the day of salvation. Amen? Praise God that today Jesus Christ is still extending his hand of grace to whoever will receive it. Today, you can still make your election sure. You can still come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Jesus has done all the work on Calvary. All that was required. All you need to do is come by faith and receive Him as your Lord and your Savior.